this light phenomena has been appearing for about 25 years, 30 years. Um, what's really interesting, there's no special cameras. Uh, all different cameras take these pictures of me. Um, I, uh, and some of them are, are really amazing. You know, some people say, oh, I paint these on, I do this, I do that. No, I don't. Absolutely not. These are very genuine. We go from the early beginnings to the, uh, some of the latest ones. And um, the latest one uh, we have is this one. I have this ability to turn my body to light. And that sounds a bit silly, but if you read the Bible, it tells you about what we are. And um, if we go into the science side of it, we are made from light. So all I'm doing is reversing my, at, my, my cell structure. At the moment, we take in light, yeah? That's how we survive. But the masters are able to turn uh, the cells around so that they can not just take in light, but give light directly uh, uh, from the celestial level. Uh, so every cell in my body lightens up. Now this particular one, two different um, cameras uh, took the same photograph. So, you know, you can't say, oh, we're well, something wrong with a camera. No, two different cameras took these photographs of this particular one. And there's a little story behind that. Um, uh, this was in Slovenia. And... Uh, it was on a Saturday evening, I was getting prepared mentally for the Sunday that I, I, I do a, a, a cave event in, in uh, Slovenia once a year. And um, I was meditating in my room and I, I said in, in my prayer, Lord, show me how to love you more. I don't know how to love you more. Please show me. When there was no answer, of course no answer. Then I turned my attention to Jesus and I said, Lord Jesus, please show me how to love God more. I really don't know how to love him more. Would you help? Would you intervene for me? And I didn't expect any answer, of course not. But all of a sudden I mentally saw the face of what I presume was Jesus. And uh, it just, oh, well, the, the former Jesus, I should say. And he just stood by the side of my bed and... Uh, smiled at me and um, I said, Lord, you know, uh, how do I love God more? And, and he smiled at me and said, don't sleep. <laughs> don't sleep. Of course, immediately I fell asleep. <laughs> I fell asleep immediately. When the next day, uh, it's about an hour and a half run from where I was staying to the uh, uh, cave event. And... Um, when I got there, I started to meditate before I went into the cave. And then I started to take these pictures and I could feel something happening to me. Uh, and then I took these pictures and this is what actually happened, uh, appeared. Um, so that, that's one of the latest ones. Uh, some of these are just really just absolutely amazing. I mean, I can go on forever talking about some of these things. But we have, um, okay, let's talk about one that I did in Israel. The national newspaper had come to do an article on me uh, and they were filming me as I was working and uh, it was broad daylight and this is the picture, a broad daylight and I was working in the healing room and they were filming me and uh, as they filmed me, I dematerialised. And they filmed me actually uh, dematerialising. Here you can see right through me. But there is a fifth photograph which I haven't got on here. And that shows me I'm completely disappeared, gone. And this is the front page of the national newspaper in Israel. And the only thing it read was magician. That's what they called me, a magician. They didn't ask how I did it anything. And it's a science. I could tell you how to do it. I can teach anyone to do it. It's a science. Yeah, it's not magic. So that was um, another one. 
Then God plays his tricks with us, doesn't he? He, he loves his little jokes and tricks. I was given um, a talk uh, on angels who are amongst us, and there was about 200 people there. And as I was talking, the angels appeared, and they filmed it. And we have uh, somewhere here, yeah, here, the pictures where you can see the angel, and you can see they've got no feet, they're floating above the ground. And to my right, you can see this, this one here, he has a beard, and that's Gabriel. Gabriel, when he comes to me, always stands to my right, and when you see him, he, ha he does have a beard. Yeah, so that was another quite amazing picture that was taken. Um, this particular one here, uh, this happened one day in the surgery in Chelmsford. I was um, working on a patient in the back room and there was about 32 people in the waiting room. It was quite packed. And um, the energy got so strong that I couldn't work. Now, that's never happened to me. I've always been able to work with any energy. So I went out into the waiting room and said to all the people, please, can you go into the courtyard because something's wrong with the energy. It's too strong to work with. When we all went outside, somebody pointed to the sky above the centre and said, look. And as we looked, Shiva, the, the, the Indian god Shiva, was above uh, the clinic. Now, 32 people saw this. So I was quite shocked. So I went back in with a couple of people to the surgery to get some water. And what we noticed, that all the water that we had turned to rose water. The smell of roses was terrific. Then as I stood there, in my right hand, honey started to run out of the palm of my hand. Now this was in front of 30-odd uh, people. You know, I had a short sleeve shirt on, no pipes coming down my arm. Uh, as, uh, I don't know if I can show you on here. Um, yeah, you can see I've got a short sleeve shirt on and my hand was outstretched like that. So I went outside to give the water and honey to people. And as they filmed me, I started to materialise a Shiva Lingam from my stomach. This is a Shiva Lingam coming from my stomach. Um, these are the colours of Shiva. I, I, uh, people can bring Lingams out, up out of their mouth and whatever from the stomach. But I believe this is the first time when you've been able to film it. Uh, before the materialisation. So this is it. But let's go back to some of the beginning of this. How did I get this phenomena? Because in truth, I can't really tell you. I, I, I can't say I did any one thing different to what I would have done anyway. But how it really began was quite amazing. I was working in the surgery and um, after one of the patients, I washed my hands. And I noticed that the water turned to mauvey pink. So I thought, oh, I've got something on my hands. I didn't take much notice. And every time I washed my hands, the water changed colour. Then one day I come in and I put clean white clothes on, which I work in. And I noticed that there was big blushes of pink all over my white clothes. So immediately I said to my wife then, my ex-wife now, uh, look, you've washed my whites with something red. She said, don't be stupid, of course I haven't. But you could see these big blushes of pink everywhere on my clothes. Then one morning, uh, our, bed, uh, our bed sheets and bed top and that was white. So I got out of bed one morning and my side of the bed the, the sheets and the uh, duvet uh, cover was pink. Absolutely beautiful pink, pink, you know? So, of course, I showed my ex-wife. We couldn't really understand what's going on. And then I showered, and as the water hit me, the water turned pink. And this went on for quite a while. When people would come to me, if they had any white clothes on, their clothes would turn pink, even the buttons would turn pink and stay pink, and stay pink. 
And I think I've got one or two pictures here. Uh, well, somewhere here. Yeah. yeah, I did put it up, didn't I? Yeah, here. This happened one morning in the surgery. A group of people said to me, we've heard about this phenomenon around you, this pink night. Would you, would you ask the Divine Mother? Because we associate the pink with Mother, you see, love of Mother. So, so I, I spoke with Mother, and as I was speaking with the Divine Mother, they were filming me, and the pink night manifested right over me, you see? Completely over me. And this has lasted quite a long while. Um, it got a little bit strange because whatever clothes I was wearing, especially white clothes, I would end up with pink lumps on it. And you couldn't clean it, it would stay pink. Then one day in the surgery, I had a white towel on a, a patient covering them, covering their upper body. And um, as I stood there, the Divine Mother appeared opposite me. And uh, I, I was quite startled. Um, and what I, all I can really remember is her eyes. They were like dark pools, beautiful dark pools of water. You know, just amazing, like saucer shaped. You know, just amazing. And um, she said a few things to me. Then she put her hand on the, uh, the white towel took it off, said a few words, disappeared. When I looked, there's a handprint in pink on the towel. And I put my hand to it, and it was twice the size of my hand. Twice the size. I couldn't believe it. I picked it up, showed the patient, ran outside to show people. And uh, eventually we auctioned that off um, for the charity. Uh, I think the last big manifestation of pink was in the bedroom uh, with some brand new sheets that was laying by my bed, uh, it still packed up. And they, these were white sheets. Um, I opened them, uh, and this was the day that we had the ashram going, so there's quite a number of people here. I opened them up to put them on my bed and the shimmering pink was all over them, all over them, unbelievable. I ran out and got people in. We've got lots of witnesses to this. It isn't what I'm saying. Now we've got over, I don't know, two, over 200 of these photographs with all different manifestations. And I say, some you might say, oh, they're just a flicker of this or flicker of that. But some of these, how do you say that? Now, one day I, I, in the surgery, I sat down just to give a little talk to people. And I, I had a book in my hand. And I'm just talking to the people and somebody was filming me. And as, the, as we're talking, the book dematerializes, disappears, and a flame appears in my hand. And in the flame, a cobbler appears. Now, this is the pictures we have here. Here you can see a book in my hand. The book is disappearing. You can see the outline of the book. And if you look in my hand, you can see like a flame and a cobbler. We blew it up so you can see it more. There's the cobbler. There's the towel, there's the flame. Now, nobody played with that. It was instant. You know, we saw it on the camera after she, she took the pictures. So she had no time to take it out anywhere and to play with it. And many witnesses to this. So we have many of these manifestations. And when you reach a certain stage of being, you notice that your energy field changes. Uh, some years ago, I received uh, Shiva consciousness. And that's roughly when you develop the third chakra. And in the Gayatri Mantra, the third chakra is Swaha. And from this point, we have an introverted triangle where Shiva consciousness appears, yeah, uh, developing. Well, when I reached that stage, that's what happened. God was giving me indication that I had reached Shiva consciousness because the cobra and, and the colours represent Shiva, you see, fire. And um, after a couple of weeks, Sai Baba, if anyone knows Sai Baba, confirmed that I'd reached that stage. He confirmed it. 
he said to me, he said, there's three levels of a human being. The first level is getting God to speak to you. He said, very, very difficult. Uh, the second level is when God does speak to you and calls you his son. And that's exactly what happened to me. The third level is when you become God. And that's really interesting because what happened after the surgery, uh, everybody went home and I sat down in the waiting room, which is like a shrine room. And, and my mantra that day was, God, I love you. God, I love you. That's all I kept repeating to myself. And as I sat down, I said, God, I love you so much. And instantly, about six foot away from me, up by the ceiling came this loud voice. My beloved son, I love you. I burst into tears. I could not believe what I was hearing. That is actually what happened. And then two weeks after that, Barbara confirmed it. Now, what's interesting about this, I've always, in, in my teachings, talked about the third chakra being Swaha and the introverted triangle. 